Hello and welcome to this month's video podcast brought to you by AMSIS Training. As always, if you have any suggestions on future podcasts, please feel free to email your ideas to podcasts at amses.co.uk. Today's topic will be an overview of integrating Mac OS X with Microsoft's Active Directory. The main point of discussions will be configuring Mac OS X to authenticate to Active Directory. Here we will look at the requirements for authentication, the actual process of binding Mac OS X to Active Directory, once bound the default user experience, and some of the options provided by Apple's Active Directory plugin. We will also look at managing your Macintosh clients in an AD environment. Here we will mention some of the options available, as well as incorporating a Mac OS X server to handle the managed preferences. In order for Mac OS X to authenticate to AD, we will require the following infrastructure. We obviously need an Active Directory domain to bind to. This will incorporate one or more domain controllers. This is where our user accounts will be hosted. You must be using the DNS system Active Directory is using, or else you won't have any chance of joining the AD domain with the Apple AD plugin. Misconfigured DNS, or even worse, no DNS, accounts for easily 99% of all problems. Then we have our Mac client running Mac OS X. Again, Mac OS X must be configured to use the AD DNS system. I can't stress this enough. Finally, OS X will make use of Microsoft's Kerberos services. Kerberos gives a strong authentication and single sign-on. One key requirement for Kerberos to work is that the clocks on the client and the servers must be synchronized and they can't be more than five minutes out. So some sort of time synchronization or time server would be advisable. In order to bind Mac OS X to Active Directory, we need to configure directory services. We do this by using the directory access utility located in your utilities folder. We must first enable the Active Directory plugin located under the Services tab. Next, we must configure the plugin. To do this, we must have local administration rights to Mac OS X. In order to bind, we must specify the Active Directory domain we wish to bind to, and a computer ID for this Mac. We then click the Bind button. To complete the binding process, we must enter a name and password of an administrator account who has permissions to create computer records. If all is well, the bind process should complete. The final step is to make sure the AD configuration has been added to the authentication pane. This should be automatic. If it is not, just click the Add button to add it manually. Once up and running, we can now log in to Mac OS X using a user account from Active Directory. We can now log in using either the email address, short name, or long name of the user account from Active Directory. Having entered correctly the name and password, we should now be presented with the standard Mac desktop. Having successfully logged in, there is a default user experience for Mac OS X users. By default, the Active Directory plugin will create a home folder in the local users folder on the local hard drive. This will be the active home folder for this user. If your AD administrator has specified a network home folder, then the plugin will mount the SharePoint that hosts this network home folder onto your desktop. A shortcut is created in the dock for the user specific network home folder. Remember though, the local home folder on the hard drive is the active one. By mounting the network home folder, users can copy files up to it. Finally, 
Full Kerberos support is available providing secure authentication and single sign-on. It's worth pointing out that most Microsoft services are Kerberized, apart from their AFP services. If you want Kerberized AFP services in an AD environment, you have a couple of options. One is a product called Extreme ZIP from Group Logic. This replaces the Microsoft AFP services with a fully Kerberized and version free compliant server. Or you can use a Mac OS X server. The Active Directory plugin has a number of useful advanced features. Under the User Experience tab, we have the following. Create mobile user account at login causes the client to cache the account credentials of the last user to use this machine. This can be handy if your user takes their machine home. Force Local Home Directory is on by default. It is this option that creates the local home folder on the hard drive. If you do select this option, the user's network home folder will be the active one, assuming one has been set up by the AD administrator. Network Protocol specifies the protocol that is used to mount any network home folders. SMB is the default. AFP is an option, but as mentioned, there are a number of limitations with Microsoft's AFP services. One is that they are not fully Kerberized, and secondly, file names of over 31 characters in length are not supported. This can cause issues, especially with preference files, hence the reason why SMB is the default. Under the Administrative tab, we have the following useful option. Allow Administration By. By default, AD user accounts do not have local admin rights to Mac OS X. By specifying specific AD groups, when a user logs in, if they belong to one of these groups, they are granted local admin rights to Mac OS X. One thing you can't achieve with Active Directory, by default, is the ability to manage your Mac OS X clients. If you want to manage your clients, we have a number of options. We can extend the Active Directory schema so it can store the Apple Managed Preferences. This is not always favoured by Active Directory administrators. There are two third-party Active Directory plugins that give limited management options. One is Direct Control from Centrify and the other is Admit Mac by Fursby. Please visit their websites for further information. By far the best way though is to use a Mac OS X server just to hold the managed preferences. To use a Mac OS X server for managed preferences, we would set it up as follows. First of all, we have our Active Directory domain with our user accounts. Next, we would install a Mac OS X server and make it an Open Directory master. We would then bind the Mac server to the Active Directory domain using the Active Directory plugin. This allows our server to gain access to user accounts under AD. This would give us the ability then to manage our Mac users at the group level. We would be able to create groups on the Mac server and make the Active Directory users members of these groups. We can also create computer lists on our Mac server. This would give us the ability to manage specific computers rather than users. Lastly, our Mac OS X client would have to be bound to Active Directory using the AD plugin and to the Open Directory server using the LDAP plugin found in Directory Access. Our client can now be authenticated against AD and be managed by our Mac OS X server. We hope you enjoyed this month's podcast. If you would like to learn more about directory services on macOS 10, then please visit our website at www.amses.co.uk forward slash training. In partnership with Apple, we offer a number of training courses which covers this area in greater depth.